All right, welcome to the Daily Drop of Christmas. The Daily Drop of Hope, our 12 days of Christmas. We are on the 11th day of Christmas, right? It's January 4th. We've been journeying together just one more day after today. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for going on this journey. And I hope that it's made the Christmas season come alive. I hope that it has extended the joy and it's been challenging for you. And I've loved kind of walking through this book and these words and these quotes from Howard Thurman. Oh my goodness, they're so good. So good. All right, so here we go. The 11th day of Christmas, right? This idea of the growing edge, the growing edge. So let's take a look at uh, some of the scriptures here that we're gonna read. It's kind of a long one today, but Luke chapter one says, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus and he will be great and he will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I'm a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Here's what Howard Thurman says. This is um, so good. It's a little long, but it's just so good. You might want to read along, but it says, Look well to the growing edge. All around us, worlds are dying and new worlds are being born. All around us, life is dying and life is being born. The fruit ripens on the tree. The roots are silently at work in the darkness of the earth against a time when there shall be new leaves, fresh blossoms, green fruit. Such is the growing edge. It is the extra breath from the exhausted lung. The one more thing to try when all else has failed. The upward reach of life when weariness closes in upon all endeavor. This is the basis of hope in moments of despair. The incentive to carry on when times are out of joint and people have lost their reason. The source of confidence when worlds crash and dreams turn into ash the birth of the child, this life. (laughs) It is life's most dramatic answer to death. This is the growing edge incarnate. Look well to the growing edge. Ah, it's so good. So good. Dr. Epperly says, God says, behold, I do a new thing, right? This new thing that God seeks often occurs in times where we feel disrupted, right? When the familiar world has collapsed around us, the future is in doubt, the days are growing shorter, and we wonder if darkness will swallow the night, right? This new thing that's being born in our lives, it comes out of the hidden womb in the dark soil, right? God's new thing is the vision of something far bigger than we can imagine. It's a hovering possibility, and it challenged the world. It challenges the world just as it is. It's this moral arc toward which history bends, filling us with divine restlessness, right? That we're just not content. We can't allow things to stay. And we're inspired to go on this journey, this quest of Christmas to to bring about a world that embraces God's vision of shalom, of peace, of wholeness. Robert Kennedy once asserted, There are those that look at things the way they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask why not. Another martyr to the violence that has plagued our nation, Martin Luther King, right? Building on the wisdom of Theodore Parker, he asserted, evil may so shape events that Caesar will occupy a palace and Christ a cross, but the same Christ arose and split history into AD and BC so that even the life of Caesar must be dated by his name. Yes, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. It bends towards justice. Christmas really is this impossible dream of what could be is not yet achieved, but what we're working towards. It's the dream of the lion and the lamb laying down together, of swords being turned into gardening tools, of the wealthy sacrificing of themselves for the poor, of the powerful initiating new policies for the well-being of today's children and, and children unborn, even to the seventh generation. You know, without this dream that this could actually be true, without impossibilities that challenge the weariness of our realistic lives, we'd be content with a world of violence and hate and prejudice and poverty. 
Without this dream, bullying, racist comments, and hate crimes, they would just be seen as normal, not violations of what is best in humankind, not violations of what is possible. Without this dream, infidelity would be just the norm and faithfulness and aberration. But God does have a dream. This dream of shalom, of peace, it emerges when we least think about it, when we least expect it, when we think that the powers of darkness are winning. God calls us into this dream, right? God calls us into this world, this realm of peacemaking. And God's dream inspires our dreams of a new earth, right? This new earth that mirrors heaven. In the words of Martin Luther King, whose vision of America reflected Thurman's, right? I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain made low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Right, This idea of of valleys and mountains and, and crooked ways being made straight is about the removal of barriers to God, the removal of barriers to shalom. And this baby Jesus, right? This baby Jesus changes everything. <laughs> right, A baby in and of itself, right? It's this idea of hope. Life can be more beautiful, that life can be more loving, that even the humblest environments, in those moments, angels sing. <laughs> This is the season. For those of us that call ourselves Christian, it's the season. It's the baby Jesus season. But this baby Jesus has to constantly be born into our lives. We have to constantly recognize Jesus being born in us, blessing us so that we might go and be a blessing to the world. So you see, Christmas, it has to be about tomorrow as well as today, right? It's about God's dream becoming our dream. It's about God's child becoming our child. Look well to the growing edges. Listen to this. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him. I give him my heart. That is the invitation. So thanks for being a part of the Daily Drop of Hope today. Uh, we are rounding the corner here. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're following along. Ha, excuse me. I hope you're taking time to read through, meditate, go through that prayer, light candles, all the good stuff. All right. I will see you tomorrow uh, for the 12th day of Christmas.